I don't know if I got knocked down or what, but I look up and Franco's just taking that Italian army right down the side. <laughs> the mythologizing of the Immaculate Reception began shortly after the final gun in Pittsburgh's locker room. Do you remember now the ball coming to you? Is it... I don't know, like I seen it bounce off and I just, you know, looked up and I just put my hands out. And, the press you know, was wild. Some of them were smart enough to come over and talk to Frenchie and they said, well, Frenchie, uh, can you explain what happened exactly? He said, well, the ball bounced off my chest. And I knew that that's not the right answer. Frenchie didn't know the rule and he just was talking. He didn't really know what happened because he got hit in the head. And I grabbed him and said, Frenchie, no, what you meant to say was... After the game, Frenchie came over, came into the locker room, and he leaned over to me and he said in my ear, he said, you know the ball hit me. I said, yeah, I know the ball hit you. He said, yeah, it did hit me, but that's the way it goes. And uh, that's a true statement. Seven days later, the plot thickened when a new angle of the play emerged on the nationally syndicated Game of the Week. From another angle, we can see that one stroke of luck, that one moment of poise, that one bounce of the ball that spells the end for one team and gives another life. The iconic image captured by Ernie Ernst's camera in the north end zone, when spliced together with the camera of Jay Gerber, who'd been positioned at midfield, created the enduring image of the play, an image that would be replayed millions of times. The Immaculate Reception and the film of it became like uh, what I like to think of the Zapruder film of, of sports. So the Zapruder film was uh, the film of the Kennedy assassination shot in Dealey Plaza. Conspiracy theories being what they are, and the assassination of a president being what it is, that film has been analyzed and dissected and argued about more than any other you know, short piece of film in history. Similarly, the film of the Immaculate Reception has been poured over in just the same way as the Zapruder film, frame by frame, image by image, idea by idea, to look for incontrovertible proof that the play was not legitimate. Folks look at it, and with, with every viewing, they want to take a new meaning from it. I mean, just, just think of everything that had to happen just so. And, and almost every one of those just so's had to be unplanned. You, you can see the fascination. You can understand it. Franco Harris's touchdown was shrouded in mystery and had an image that would become iconic. But to become a play for the ages, it needed a name. And it was christened the night of the game by this man in a Pittsburgh tavern. This was the synchronicity of universal events. It was destined to happen, it was going to happen, we just didn't know it was going to happen. Growing up Catholic, I remember the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And I thought, damn. So I climbed up on a table, and like you do at an old fire hall wedding, you know, I got a spoon and I banged on a glass. I would like to uh, suggest that from this day on, we refer to this day as the Feast of the Immaculate Reception. And the place went bonkers. Ord's girlfriend, Sharon Lavosky called Myron Cope, a local sportscaster, and he pronounced Franco's catch immaculate that night on the 11 o'clock news. But it took a while to catch on. The team's sanctioned highlight film made no mention of the name. The Pittsburgh Steelers, division champions. It has a nice ring. None of Pittsburgh's newspapers referred to the play as the immaculate reception until September of 1973, and reporters outside of Pittsburgh didn't know what to call it. How about that play of yours, uh, the one that uh, enabled you to come out ahead? I, I didn't hear that name, I don't think, for a, at least a couple of years. Pittsburgh and Oakland have a bitter rivalry. Oakland got beat here in the deflection of Franco Harris. Remember the miraculous reception of Franco, and that happened here. Dan Rooney is about family, faith, and football, he didn't like the sound of immaculate reception. I mean, it sounded a little sacrilegious to him. Most of the media in Pittsburgh stayed away from it. There are commercials from a year later, two years later, where they talk about this tipped pass. 
that deflected pass in the last minute of the game put Pittsburgh in the playoffs. For the it first took time. a while before everyone embraced it. I remember hearing it for the first time, I think, in the, the first Super Bowl year, in 74, maybe. Remember the immaculate reception? I thought that was the greatest thing I'd ever heard. It was a stroke of genius. Once it was dubbed the immaculate reception, it kind of took on a life of its own. I mean, you saw it everywhere. The immaculate reception. The immaculate, the immaculate reception. reception. Franco Harris's immaculate reception. The Immaculate Reception is the most famous play in NFL history. The name is important for why we recall it today as one of the you know, greatest moments in history. The Immaculate Reception as a name is a great name. So to call it like the Great Deflection or something, or you know, the improbable 22 second 66 circle option, I think the name mattered a lot. The catch. It's nice, it's in the memory of, it's a, it's a big play, but it doesn't have the pizzazz, it's not marketable, it, you know, it, the immaculate reception is so apropos. The reception you've given me has been uh, so wonderful here. You could almost call it an immaculate reception. Miracle and immaculate imply larger religious godlike implications. It's very weird that we've come to think of this play as something religious. People thought it was about the, the virgin birth. It wasn't about, it wasn't about Jesus. It was about the Immaculate Conception, where Mary is visited by an angel of God and therefore becomes pregnant without having been touched by sin. Here was the Immaculate Reception. Franco had received the ball, like the baby, it had not been touched by Frenchie Fuqua, because if it had, then the, the play wouldn't have been legal. <laughs>